Buonasera a tutti, benvenuti virtualmente al Circolo del Design. Sono Sara Fortunati, sono il direttore del Circolo del Design, circolo che ha felicemente e finalmente riaperto settimana scorsa lanciando la nostra nuova programmazione culturale tutta dedicata al tema dell'umanizzazione della tecnologia. Eh, umanizzazione della tecnologia che svilupperemo attraverso, che stiamo sviluppando attraverso una serie di incontri, dibattiti, talk come quello che eh, stiamo per aprire tra poco, workshop, performance, proiezioni di film e con un grande convegno internazionale che avrà luogo presso le OGR a Torino dal 17 al 19 di giugno dal titolo Humanizing Technology Through Design. Il compito di questo convegno sarà quello di fare il punto sulle migliori pratiche eh, contemporanee eh, di umanizzazione della tecnologia per l'appunto attraverso il design, eh, percorrendo cinque grandi tematiche che sono quelle dei servizi pubblici, della mobilità, dell'intelligenza artificiale, della salute e della formazione. Il tutto aperto da una sessione interamente dedicata alla, alla relazione tra l'etica e l'utilizzo delle tecnologie. A curare questo convegno eh, è stato Jan Christoph Zoels, che eh, abbiamo anche chiamato a curare una mostra dal titolo Easy as a Kiss, che è la mostra che in questo momento è eh, trovata al circolo del design e che abbiamo voluto progettare, realizzare ed allestire grazie al brillante e generoso eh, contributo appunto di Jan Christoph Zoels per eh, ricordare, per omaggiare la storia di Interaction Design Institute Ivrea. Storia che rappresenta un punto di grande, eh, di grande avanguardia, di grande visione che vent'anni fa tra i primi al mondo ha dato un fortissimo contributo nella formazione di una figura professionale del mondo del design che trova la sua rilevante specificità nella, eh, nella progettazione della relazione tra l'essere umano e la macchina, per l'appunto quindi tra gli esseri umani e le tecnologie. Eh, da qui volevamo partire nella nostra riflessione appunto sul tema che eh, vedrete consultando il sito e partecipando eh, agli eventi qui al circolo del design sviluppato in molteplici forme e che oggi tratteremo appunto all'interno di questa talk. Eh, now I switch to English because I'd really like to introduce you our guests. Uh, so... Thank you for being here today to Franco De Benedetti, former president of Interaction Design Institute Ivrea, Gillian Crampton Smith, director of the Institute, Jan Christoph, our brilliant and generous curator and professor of the Interaction Design Institute Ivrea, Laura Polazzi, uh, former researcher and uh, visiting professor of uh, the Institute, and Kim Mingo, Farmer student of Interaction Design Institute Ivrea. Thank you very much for being here. I'll let you, I give you the stage, Jan Christoph, and welcome. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you to the team of the Circular Deal Design for supporting this initiative. 20 years ago, Interaction Design Institute Ivrea was founded. It's now time to rethink the impact of this institute and how its students at faculty and its advisor have changed our understanding, teaching and practice of design, of user experience, and of course of services worldwide. In this spirit, the Circular Del Design in Turin organized an exhibition and of course a conference on the theme of humanizing technology through design. I'm very happy to be a curator and I would first and foremost thank my co-curators Gillian Crampton-Smith, Andrea Di Salvo and Mark van der Beken for their excellent support. Without you, this wouldn't have been happened. Also thank you to our outstanding photographers who documented the history of the Institute in such a beautiful way, particular Ivan Gasparini, Santiago Calacea and Pino Guidolotti. And of course, to you alumni and faculty, without you, this whole thing wouldn't have been happened. So, grazie mille. 
the exhibition easy as a kiss 20 years of interaction design ifrea really has four or five core parts on one side it traces the timeline the people and the influence internationally of this interaction design institute it connects us to olivetti's heritage and its impact on ifrea localitaire or the location was very important, the context. The exhibition analyzes how design education and our professional practice changed from agile creation of uh, designers, computer scientists, people from the social sciences and the business professionals in one intensive graduate program. And it collects the testimony of those who lived and worked there. So we are showing the power of 10. We are looking back at 10 particular theses or projects of students during that time and show or let the, or ask them to tell us how these projects catapulted them into their position and their work today. And lastly, this exhibition shows the local impact, how interaction IFREA really stimulated the impact and the growth of design, interaction and service design in Piedmont, in Italy, and of course, in, in Turin in itself. And forgive me one last thing, we celebrate four student teams, the winners of this year's interaction design associations, uh, design competition who show us through their videos uh, the best ideas of today. I dedicated this exhibition to the women who taught us. First and foremost, of course, to Gillian and to Joy Mundford at, at Apple, but also to Brenda Laurel, who was involved with in our first year. Uh, to Muriel Cooper, who influenced me widely as I arrived in the United States in 91, to Red Burns from NYU's ITP program, who visited us several times, Shelley Evanson, now at Carnegie Mellon, and of course, Birgit Marga, who introduced during that same time the education and service design. Thank you. You were the pioneers. Uh, we are standing on your shoulders really appreciate that. Now, this talk today brings together the actors of the first hour, really the pioneers, Franco and his partner Barbara Geller, really the ideators of Interaction Ifrea. And we will turn to you in a moment, Gillian as its first director and really the, the force, intellectual force behind many of us. It's a big challenge for us as faculty. Laura, one of our first researchers, uh, and Kim, uh, one of our first students at the Institute. Allow me to start now with Franco uh, and put you on the hot seat. Franco, you were for 14 years uh, uh, CEO of Olivetti, a senator of the Republic of Italy. Now you are still involved as the president of Instituto Bruno Leoni. Uh, you are a manager, uh, a supporter, an ideator. Tell us shortly why you decided to create Interaction IFREA and why you and Barbara Geller maybe decided to start Interaction IFREA. Well, thank you, Jan Christoph. There are <clears throat> a number of persons who are the key persons in this endeavor. First of all is Roberto Colanino. He had taken over uh, Telecom Italia, uh, that was the name of the team at that time, and with the largest uh, buyout uh, public offer ever in Italy and one of the largest in Europe. Uh, uh, when he, he, with that success, after that success, he, he felt he had some he, he, he had some, he must give something to Ivrea who had made it possible for him to make this trip from 
left his career from a small uh, manager of a very small factory in, in for of, of uh, uh, filter oil filters for cars in Mantova to the CEO of one of the largest corporations in Italy. And he, he had set up, of course, uh, some people to, some consultants to, uh, to ask, and they wanted to, the usual blah, blah, to teach technique to professors and humanities to technicians. And I, I every evening I, I spoke with, with one, my wife, Barbara, and she is really the key person because she convinced me that what was what had to be done was interaction design, and I was able to convince Colanino to do it. And um, she had worked. She she knew something about interaction design because she had worked for several years in software houses, which were in a way and connected with also with Silicon Valley. She knew, she knew people over there. So it was, they knew, they knew what it meant. I didn't know what it was, what it, was, what it meant. And uh, Colonino less than any other. So it's, um, then uh, I convinced Colonino and it wasn't a small thing because it was, uh, the, the cost was, to set it up was 15 billion lire, and the yearly budget was about 6 million euro. Not so, not so, so small. And uh, my contribution was ask, actually just well to convince Colonino and then to write the charter of the, because I wanted the, uh, the, uh, this institute to be completely independent from the companies, from the from their owners, and uh, second, uh, I wanted them to be they wanted the to be fully fully financed the, the year before, so that we, at the end of the year we don't have to be there and ask you will will the money come from next year? I knew I had some experience in that, and I didn't want to. Uh, then. Uh, uh, so we knew some, somebody in, in, in the Silicon Valley and we, we made a trip over there and over there we knew, we get to know, uh, we have, uh, knew uh, Bill Mortgage and Bill Bergblank. And uh, they, we explained them what, well, we, they explained us what, what we have to do. And my question was, but who is going to do that? And they told me, one person, Gillian Clinton Smith. And, we, in, in London, we met in London, we discussed uh, uh, several times, for, well, a number of times, and then finally uh, in a dinner at the Connaught Hotel in, 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 in London, we agreed that she would come and, and, uh, and create Interaction Design Institute there. And uh, well, um, and of course there was also the the, the culture, the back, the cultural background of uh, Ivrea, Olivetti, Ivrea, Petro Sozzas, the uh, Luque, uh, and so on. And Franco, at which stage did you knew that you had something created special, something unique? When were you aware of it? Well. Uh, Ask, uh, ask Gillian how much time it took the, it took her to, to teach them what what it really was, and of course it also for me I was I was a manager and uh, I had in theater I, I had a group of companies forty five thousand people I was a chief a CEO of Olivetti I mean. Number of things, so it was yeah. no, I understand. Far, no. away, far away from interaction design. So, yes. the first people to uh, after Colonino, it was me to be to to, to to that Gillian had to show what, and I was amazed, especially. I would say now I, I understand more and more 
uh, how important it was. Uh, I remember that Gillian spoke about uh, connected communities. That was Facebook. She spoke about uh, wearable computers. I thought I have on my, on my wrist. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also always ask myself, why did, did it not happen? It happened in, in Silicon Valley. Why did it not happen in, in Olivetti? We had mm -hmm. all the cultural background in Olivetti to make it possible. Now, I don't speak to, of, of interaction with but really, to why didn't we grow to that? I think, and I, because the only, that was, Olivetti was a livrea where the only places in Italy. We had everything. We had the, 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 the know-how, we had uh, financial background. Uh, we had uh, El Serino Piolo. Uh, we had a, 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 a subsidiary um, research a research team in in in, uh, yeah, in Cupertino. So we had everything was there culturally and also financially to make it possible. Why didn't Why didn't we? create these companies, didn't grow these companies in Italy. That is something that I can, well, it didn't, it didn't grow, it didn't, uh, it didn't happen in, 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 in any, it didn't happen in any place in Europe. So there is probably some... Uh, That's a reason to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, today we are talking with the pioneers of the first hour and At the end of this exhibition, which is running currently at the Circolo del Design in September, I would like to have another conversation uh, with the people who were involved in the last year, etc. And maybe at that time, then we can also talk what remained, what were maybe mistakes, and also why it closed. Today, I want to really celebrate uh, first uh, the ideas which led to uh, interaction Ifrea and the impact it, it made. Allow me now to go to, to Gillian with my next question. The exhibition is called Easy as a Kiss. You, together with a team of people from the CRD program, Computer Related Design Program at RCA, developed a video for the opening of Interaction IFREA in December. 2000. Um, Gillian, can you come on the camera, please? Uh, can you give us a short idea why the title Easy as a Kiss and why does it still matter maybe today? Well, what we thought was that uh, it should be, uh, to use a computer should be easy as a kiss. Uh, and you shouldn't have to think about how to make it work. Uh, it should just be natural. Now, we know it's not quite as easy as that, but um, that was the idea. Uh, <laughs> and, and that's actually also still the idea which holds for us as curators that we call to come the exhibition easy as a kiss. Uh, you don't need to read something. You don't need to have an... Uh, an action manual to understand yeah. what interaction design should be. Now, you came from the College of Art. Uh, you had found there the computer design program, very impressive, very early on. But what did you set out to do differently uh, at Interaction IFREA? Well, the Royal College is a, a graduate school of art and design. And it covers 24 different art and design disciplines. So the CRD program I ran was deeply rooted in art and design. And it was when I was uh, working uh, for several summers in, in, at Apple Computer in Joy Mountford's uh, Human Interface Research Group that I realized uh, just how how valuable it was for designers to work directly with engineers, anthropologists, psychologists, uh, business people. And, and that really wasn't possible at the Royal College of Art. 
And so uh, one of the things that we decided uh, would be really important uh, in Interaction Ivrea was that there would be faculty and students from different disciplines. And I think that that's one of the uh, reasons for the very powerful projects that came out of Interaction Ivrea. So, and what lured your particular to Ivrea besides, of course, Franco's and Barbara's kind words? What made you interested in Ivrea? Well, um, I had the, the best job that in my field in the world. Uh, I was in London, uh, I was a professor, um, I had uh, collaborations with Silicon Valley with Europe. So it took a lot to uh, persuade me. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, th there were links with Italy already. Um, my husband, Philip, and I were, uh, we fell in love with Italy when we were students, separately, um, before we met each other. And we used to go uh, as, as often as we could to Italy. We had friends there. And it meant that, that I could already speak Italian. Um, not well, but well enough. Uh, Mm -hmm. And uh, Phil's uh, architectural practice uh, had several commissions from Olivetti UK uh, mm -hmm. to do buildings. And so we already knew about the company and admired it. Uh, and so that was um, a great lure uh, to be part of that tradition, particularly mm -hmm. as uh, the year 2000 was the 100th anniversary of the birth of Adriano Olivetti. I was attracted to the beautiful situation um, in the foothills of the Alps. Um, mm -hmm. From the building of the Blue, Blue House, we looked out uh, to the mountains. Mm -hmm. um, and I was attracted to the building, the space, because at the RCA, we had very, very cramped um, studio. And, uh, and, and basically it, it did restrict what we could do. And maybe most important, I was impressed and I liked the people who were working to develop the, uh, the Institute. Uh, and I was uh, very happy about the commitment of the CEO, Roberto Colonino, uh, to the Institute. So all those things uh, went, came together to persuade me. Great, thank you, thank you. Tell us three unexpected outcomes. Well, I think um, the first one is that I, I really had not appreciated how important the support staff, the administrative staff are to the smooth running of an institution. Um, and um, I remember when uh, we were going to hire um, the director of administration, I imagined that we would have um, people who were in museum administration, arts administration of one kind or another. And when they turned up, they were all engineers. Uh, and I realized that uh, in Piedmont, engineering is a really um, popular a degree to do. Uh, and uh, Ivrea and Torino are, are centers of, en of engineering. Um, and so, and so it was, uh, and we chose an engineer, uh, um, Mauro De Marziani. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was really delighted uh, to, to find how efficient, um, committed, loyal uh, they were uh, to, uh, to the whole idea of the Institute. Uh, and they supported us in, in extreme ways. Uh, it, it was terrific, and we, we were really grateful to their, their commitment to us. The second, um, I would say, is I was surprised at how many um, leading designers and professors were prepared to come from all over the world to give workshops uh, in, uh, in Ivrea. And this was great for both faculty, our faculty and students, because it made us feel we were part of an, uh, an international uh, community. Many of the students 
had already worked for several years. And so they'd come to Ivrea to just deepen their ideas uh, of interaction design and to, to, to develop and explore their own ideas. And this was very stimulating for the, uh, for the visitors. And it helped, of course, that we had, uh, we had Talponia, the mole hill, which was Olivetti's uh, residence where they could stay. But not only this, also Italy is a, a wonderful place to live. And I think everybody who came enjoyed uh, the culture, um, the food. And, and for that reason too, I think it's a pity that, that this doesn't happen more often, that there are international uh, institutions uh, coming uh, to live uh, and found themselves in Italy. Another thing I hadn't foreseen at all uh, was Arduino, um, mm -hmm. the prototyping board that uh, was developed here, uh, was developed in Ivrea uh, as a collaboration between faculty, students, and the sports staff. Now it's a company in Torino with several. Um, uh, employees and it's in and the boards they make are in use all over the world by universities and design studios. What it has meant is that uh, designers don't need to be engineers in order to make prototypes of digital devices and what and it's led to the fact that they can contribute more fluidly to the development of industrial projects. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this is a, a great advantage for the industry. And that's one of the important things that, does, that emerged from Ivrea. Mm -hmm. And then of course, at the beginning, I hadn't thought of uh, the second generation. Um, and uh, lots of uh, alumni are already teaching. Um, but there are two things that stand out particularly, I think. Uh, one uh, is the Copenhagen Institute of Interaction Design, which was started by Simona Maskey, Ali Rose, and, uh, 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 and Heather Martin. Um, and they, they took uh, 25 students a year, international students, um, and, and developed uh, the kind of teaching that we were doing in Ivrea. The second, uh, the second, second uh, uh, generation. generation is um, the, the program that Philip and I started at uh, UAV, uh, University of Architecture, Art and Design. And the, here we were doing courses which were followed by graphic designers and product designers. And uh, over the years we were there, a hundred uh, followed uh, us uh, for their thesis. And they of them, half are living abroad, uh, working abroad, and the other half uh, living in Italy. Yes. And I, I think for the exhibition, we asked several of the first, second, and third generation interaction designers to contribute a short vision about interaction design. Also two of the students uh, from uh, UAF, uh, Laura Bodin and Damiano Gay, were actually invited. And I invite you later on to watch the movies. Gillian, allow me to, to move to another topic. Yes. The first six professors were all men. We called ourselves Snow White and the Six Little Dwarfs. Only later on we hired uh, female faculty. Why, why was it difficult? We had 50% female students, 50% female researchers, but why not female faculty? Well, I think, uh, f firstly, it, there wasn't a very big pool of people to draw on because uh, interaction design wasn't well known uh, and there were hardly any uh, teaching programs. Um, but I think that when I was at the RCA, there were lots of women professors, there were lots of women students. I, I didn't really think about it. And when we were uh, recruiting, we were looking for different nationalities and different disciplines. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then when we'd hired the first ones, um, Judy Wirt, who was our recruiter and I looked at each other and we said, they're all men. Um, so the next phase, uh, we looked for, uh, um, for hiring uh, women professors. If I look back, I, I think it was true then that, that men were better, well, better known in, in our field. Um, and indeed, in, uh, at some point, uh, ACM SIGCHI, the American uh, uh, Association, uh, wanted to make a poster that would encourage people to study uh, human-computer interaction. Uh, and they put out uh, for comments um, the poster, and it was uh, 12 pioneers of interaction design. <laughs> there wasn't a single man, I mean, a woman, sorry. They were all men. And, uh, and I'm glad to say there was an outcry. Um, and so their, resp their response, the response of the committee was, well, who then? Um, and um, a load of people, uh, put in uh, a lists of well more than a dozen um, leading pioneers uh, who, who were women. And I'm not sure if that's different today because then the women that, were, that existed and were leaders weren't, di didn't jump into the, uh, into the committee's minds. Mm -hmm. um, but I think today, I know we would be much more careful about balance right from the beginning, but also mm -hmm. there are more women leaders now. Mm -hmm. And some of them uh, studied at Ibrea. Yes, and thank you. Maybe this is the right lead on to our next guest. Thank you, Gillian. We will continue our conversation. Also, please come and visit the exhibition. There's an excellent part about airport and monastery, the idea of bringing people to Ivrea, to the local context, work and live with our students. But now I would like to invite uh, Laura Polazzi. Um, Laura was one of our first researchers. She is now uh, a user researcher and service designer for FF Forward or Fast Forward. Uh, I remember keenly uh, sitting with her outside the, um, uh, the tennis courts at Olivetti and trying to convince her to come and join us uh, in the first cohort of Interaction Ifrea. Laura, welcome. How, how did you heard about Interaction Ifrea and why did you join? Uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, so um, I, I remember that because I was um, I was living in Paris at the time and I was uh, working in university and I, and I was about to start a PhD, but um, I wasn't very convinced about it. I felt like I needed more action, you know, and more more something more applied. It was great to, you know, do everything I was doing and ethnography and research, etc. But I was really missing that part and I wasn't sure I would see myself there. So this friend of mine who actually was studying with Gillian at, at the CRD, Gianni Tozzi, who then also joined Ivrea for, for a short while, he told me about this thing that was going to happen. And he said it was going to be in Ivrea. And I was like, Ivrea, really? <laughs> Because, I mean, I knew about Olivetti and everything, but you know, this kind of starship of the, all these people, Gillian, people from uh, faculty from all over the world were going to, Ivre, to Italy first and then Ivrea. So it felt like uh, unreal, but, but also amazing. Um, and so I started, you know, learning about it. Also, it, then the rumors spread a bit, but it wasn't so, you know, it wasn't like a public news. And so I, I applied, I remember compiling paper and at the time it was more like paper and, and, and phone calls. So I had these phone calls with all a bunch of people on the other side with all these different accents, including Jan Christoph, which was a bit intimidating for me at the time. And then I came with my crutches because I had, had an accident. So it was kind of adventurous, but, um, but it was amazing because what I found was what I was looking for and also much more. I mean, I, like uh, Gillian was saying, it was really a combination of uh, people, skills, um, specialties, you know, everything that 
um, would make I mean, to make things happen in, in a different way, not just uh, speculating and researching, but also making things happen. And that was amazing. I, I still miss something like that, I have to say. <laughs> well, shortly, tell us about your first research project, which you did there, and why does it still matter, or maybe not? Mm. Okay, my first project and my first and longest project there was like a life project uh, that I did with two um, uh, girls, um, Margot Jacobs and Christina Anderson, which I met there and we immediately connected and we got together with this idea, which was like, it was kind of natural because we were all uh, people um, in this new community, but disconnected from our, you know, distant loved ones. So that we chose that as a topic and we decided to investigate the topic and I think the most interesting part of the project was the methodology we used to for that which was through a series of games the if only games that we that were you know carefully designed and uh, left in the uh, in the space of the school so we made the the cool thing in a way was that we didn't we did it secretly so nobody knew they were coming from us and some of you maybe remember the uh, distant ones, which was an, this um, uh, imaginary um, character where that was asking people to do things. And, and we kept doing this with, with initially with the uh, physical stuff and then with the in, interactive prototypes. Uh, I think the methodology is still interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, I mean, in terms of how to engage people in uh, research, but also in a way the topic as well, because, uh, you know, we communicate a lot. There's, compared to those years, there's, you know, there has been an explosion and an overload of uh, communication based on videos, images, everything, but still the emotional part and the sensorial part of this distant communication is not very de developed. So I think there's still room for working in that domain. And for me, it was really an, a vision of what an emotionally engaging social media with a dedicated core group of, of friends uh, and, and colleagues could be. So it was very impressive. So, what did you learn at Interaction Ifrea that impacted you in your professional life? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> I mean, you... A little bit more specific. Or... Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, as, as you were mentioning, we were so lucky that, you know, we had one day Don Norman, one day uh, Ettore Sotsas, we had John Tucker and Bill Morridge, you know, all the time, I mean, often there commenting on our project. So... It, and also the, the, the faculty, but also the, the students, as Gillian was saying, were so qualified that we were really learning from everyone all the time. But, you know, if I have to think of something that, you know, had a, a, a more direct and continuous impact on my career was maybe um, uh, the live work uh, people uh, work on service design. They, I mean, that was a, absolutely the first time I heard about service design. And uh, Lavrance, Ben, and then Chris, from, who were also coming from RCA, um, were you know telling us about this new, I mean, not new, but this idea of service design. And I also had the chance to work with them. Uh, with Lavrance in particular. So yeah, that's something that st that stayed with me. It's still with me, so that was uh, the strongest impact. In in a, but everything had an impact: the people, the environment. Thanks, Laura. I I, I recall. I mean, Interaction Ifrea had the great hand in picking out some talented people to visit with us in their early stages before they became famous, like Carlo Rati. Uh, yeah. Usman Haq or uh, Tony Dunn and Fiona Rebi ah, yeah. or Tom Kruber who later on uh, started Siri. A lot of interesting people who actually jumpstart and challenged us and our ideas. Now allow me to go to Kim. Kim, please turn on your video. 
Kim was one of our first students. Um, I had the chance to work with her already in the 90s at the Sony Design uh, Laboratory at the Galileo Research Studio. We were good friends and I was very happy to see her applying then also to uh, Interaction Ifrea. Tell us a little bit, what did you found upon arrival in Ifrea? What, what was there coming from New York? Besides an old friend from New York. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, when I arrived in Ivrea, uh, the first thing I think I was, I was really struck by was the town itself, by the architecture. You know, I had never before visited Ivrea. So uh, as Laura mentioned, we went through the, um, the, the process of um, actually applying and being selected mostly remotely. Now this is quite normal, but at the time it was, was not. So I had not visited Ivrea before I arrived. So when I got there, I had known about Olivetti, but it was really the first time that I had seen Ivrea. And I had known about this idea that he had employed some of the best architects and urban planners in order to help him to realize vision of you know, a more human industrial city. But the thing that struck me really was this idea that, you know, against this bucolic backdrop of a small town in the foothills of the Alps where you would not really expect to find it. Um, it was such a departure from New York. It was really, you know, where, where uh, things had already started for me for my career. I was already uh, practicing interaction designer, as, as you mentioned, you know, at the Sony Design Center. And when I arrived, it was um, September of 2001. So it was a really uh, critical moment, a historic moment, especially for those of us coming from New York. So when I arrived in Ivrea, it really felt like I stepped into this sort of, um, I don't know, like a utopia, you know? Um, I entered uh, the blue house um, where the labs were found, where we had the classrooms. And, uh, and I remember that some of the researchers were already at work. Um, I may have even met Laura that first day. Um, but I do recall that there were drills and there were circuit boards and there were computers and uh, people were making things. It was incredible. It was incredible to see this, uh, this collaboration and this energy. Um, and there was from the, from the start, this amazing feeling of optimism and, um, and community. So we were you know, a small group of international students, about 20 of us really thrown together into what at that time to me seemed to be the middle of nowhere. And we were there learning from some of the uh, most prominent thought leaders in interaction design at the time. Um, and everybody just had this incredible amount of energy and optimism that they put into everything. So that's really what struck me. And I do also remember the light, the sunlight. I, I really remember my first time coming into this blue house the blue tiles outside, the red window frames, and inside an atrium in Turkey's color. I mean, it was just a color explosion coming from uh, standard gray New York. I mean, color matters. So. Yes, and, and I think that you gained some inspiration from that in your wardrobe, am I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Please recount us a project or learning experience which challenged you. Oh, Gosh. Um, okay. So, <laughs> um, so I'm a person who really likes to work uh, within constraints, right? So, and everything up until that moment I had learned about interaction design was really on the job. So my undergraduate was in graphic design and I, I really learned about interaction design uh, working at the Sony Design Center. So I learned to design within constraints. So at Ivrea, it seemed every project to me was a challenge with its open-endedness, right? And I think with the faculty that was really pushing us to avoid superficiality, to really go further, to go deeper. So um, I found this, just the whole context really very challenging. But if I think about um, one project in particular that I collaborated with another student, Rajesh Tahia, on um, was really around um, this idea of trying to understand uh, the emotional impact related to um, access and archiving of personal digital imagery. So photographs, right? Um, and this was 20 years ago. So we're talking about, um, you know, the early, uh, early era of digital imagery. 
So we were trying to understand how we could maintain the emotion that printed photographs or printed matter really evoked. Um, when at the moment there wasn't really a compelling way to um, to navigate these 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 images. So throughout our research, we um, we identified some key moments in the experience of browsing um, these these artifacts, these photographs. Um, and we found a moment that seemed to bring real joy, this idea of the surprise and excitement of photographs rediscovered and refound. And we decided to go into that um, and really try to understand how we could recreate that, um, that feeling. Um, so uh, we were doing this in the context of a project that was around tangible computing. Mm -hmm. So the, the solution that we came up with really revolved around this, um, this creation of a container, right? And the idea of these pebbles um, and then refinding each pebble actually uh, contained a, a photograph and, uh, and the ability to sort of serendipitously find these items um, and have something physically reminded you of them, being able to trade them, being able to give them away um, was, was part of the, the core concept. So I think the challenge was really not only in creating um, the prototype to get that message through, sort of a Wizard of Oz type of prototype, but also really um, the challenge itself of bringing the emotional warmth um, back to these experiences that really warranted them, warranted them. So I don't know, I'm a person who loves rooting through boxes and of photographs at flea markets and I'm still yeah. asking myself really what will happen in the future, where will all of the discarded you know, hard drives filled with digital images end up, where, how will people get these peaks into our private lives that we can now find in these contexts. Yeah, I, I remember it was really a search for digital delicacies. How do we bring up memories by surprise, support, curiosity, etc.? Allow me to, to move on here. You left after one year to join the new Motorola Design Center in Milan. Why did you leave and what did you found at Motorola? <laughs> Well, uh, at that time, there were um, we really started seeing a lot of interesting opportunities for interaction designers, you know, coming, especially in, in, in Italy. And I was really eager, you may even say a little bit impatient to get at some of these. Um, and this was a time when um, mobile devices were, you know, really promising and exciting future. So this was pre razor and uh, <laughs> let alone, you know, pre iPhone. So Uh, it was really, um, for me, just as I wanted to be part of something that was new at Ivrea, I really wanted to really jump on that opportunity to help shape where design for mobile experiences would, was headed. And, you know, I found this opportunity to do that, or should I say the opportunity, you know, found on me. That said, uh, I have to admit that now that I've been working for over 20 years, I would do anything to have uh, a year back when I could have access to some of the smartest minds that were there at my disposal to advise me, right? To guide me in this academic environment where really the limit was only the creativity and the will. So that time was truly priceless. Thank you, Kim. Uh Interestingly enough, many of, of you went immediately after graduation uh, into important jobs or built their first jobs from Markus Westkamp to people like uh, Christian Palino, Chris Nössel, etc., uh, Bruce Kick and Jill. A lot of very, very different students and alumni which now dominate uh, or are leading forces in uh, companies worldwide from Microsoft to Google to Apple uh, to uh, Waymo, Volvo, etc. But also, as Gillian already mentioned, in educational institutions uh, all across the world, uh, in Potsdam, uh, in, of course, Copenhagen Institute of Interaction Design, etc., etc., to Rochester Institute of Technology, Carnegie Mellon, etc., uh, etc., et And of course, few in, in private practices uh, here in Italy as well as worldwide. The time is nearly up. Uh, I would like to invite you all to come and join us when you have a chance to come to Italy, see the exhibition in Turin. The exhibition will last for six months until September. Uh, I would like to thank very much our sponsors, uh, uh, 
I would like to thank the team at Circular Del Design, but first of all, all the beautiful work of the alumni and faculties uh, which made that happen. And it's a labor of love. Uh, I strongly believe that the awareness of interaction, Ifrea, should go out there and help us to rethink uh, not only how interaction design history is, is being informed, but also to take it forward into Italy, into Europe, and see how that can grow further. Thank you very much. Thank you, Franco and Barbara. Thank you, Gillian, Laura, Kim, uh, Sarah, Marta, Rosanna, uh, Marilivia, everybody behind there, and then again, everybody else who was involved. Look forward to have another conversation. Please come and join us at the Circular del Design in Turin. We plan to have a website available also with the uh, content and text. We look forward to travel this exhibition if anyone is interested. And last but not least, in June, mid of June, we are organizing a conference, Humanizing Technology, focusing on humanizing artificial intelligence, mobility, healthcare, public services, learning, um, and many of our interaction Ifrea alumni will give uh, either some keynotes or some uh, case studies supported by the strong teams here in Italy. We look very much forward. All the best. Thank you for your time. Have a good day. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you. Good. I say goodbye. I close my video. Ciao, ciao. Thank you, Franco. Ciao. All my best.